of course, got excited by this when it seems quite obvious this is just Iran's way of cooling down unrest in the country coming from the very top, from uh, the leadership and the mullahs, giving them the illusion of a freer nation like the one that was stolen from them so long ago. Katie, Katie McFarland is the former Trump deputy national security advisor. She joins us now along with Amir Fakhravar, who fled Iran as, as a political prisoner. And to you both, thanks for coming on. K Katie, I suspect nothing actually really changes in Iran. Is that what you suspect? Yeah. I mean, look, nobody gets to run for president of Iran unless they've been approved by the Guardian Council. And those guys are approving the, the people they want. There are no moderate co politicians in Iran. So forget about getting snookered. And I just want to point out that in 2013, I was at a meeting with the Iranian Prime Minister Rouhani, and he was talking. It was a Council on Foreign Relations meeting. He was saying, you know, the, the relationship they hope to have with the United States. And bursting into the room was Secretary of State John Kerry. He said, I have a breakthrough to announce. The Iranians have just agreed to negotiate with us. Well, everyone was looking at John Kerry. I was looking at the Iranian Prime Minister. He had the grin on his face. He was like he just swallowed the canary. He was so pleased with himself. They played us the whole time. How are the people that run our country and foreign policy typically so dumb? It's just amazing. Amir, your, your thoughts uh, and, and, and what might change here, if anything at all? Um, uh, thank you, Rob, for having me. And uh, Katie, 100% uh, right. And the description of Iran, Rob, you mentioned was amazing because that's the reality. In Iran, we don't have such a thing, election. And we don't have such a thing moderate. These are some revolutionary, crazy Muslims who, the, let's say, Marxist Islamists, who came to power 45 years ago. And then this specific guy, they are talking about it, Masoud Pezishkian, and they're calling him doctor, surgeon. No, you know what? These type of uh, doctors in Iran, after revolution, they are getting a lot of privilege to go and be the doctors right. because they're, they pushed out all those people who could be a doctor. And this guy started the cultural revolution in Iran yeah. in 1980. Amir. The same as most yeah. cultural revolution. Right. But Amir, and I, I want to follow up with that. Do, do you think that the, the, the leadership in Iran, you know, I, I'm wondering if you think that they're, they're noticing very good chance Trump comes back, could be a disaster for them financially. Do they see this as a way of appeasement to their people to kind of cool down the temperature domestically because they might be going through a lot of pain internationally here very soon? Oh, definitely. As I mentioned in my article last week, um, that the, the regime right now is very afraid that yeah. President Trump is coming back because Trump hurted them badly, killing Qasem Soleimani, coming out of JCPOA, cutting the lifeline of regime with oil sanction. All right. these destroyed regime, bankrupted them. And right now they can see President Trump is coming back in November and they are worried. Regime is just pu pushing the pedal to have the nuclear warhead as fast as they can, right. even if they can have it before Biden leaving the office. And then they, they want to make sure well, before Trump coming, right. they can just uh, make fool out of the international community. Yeah, KT. it's moderate, uh, yeah. president. Just don't worry. K KT, you, you, you might be back in the White House dealing with this country for, you know, for the next four years if, if, if Trump wins this election in November. W w what's your prediction? What, what do you expect um, as far as they're, they're moving closer to a, a nuclear weapon? They're still not there. Yeah, well, President Trump has made it pretty clear he's pro-Israel. He's anti-Iran. He's going to reinforce the sanctions. He's going to drive energy prices from $90 a barrel to $40 a barrel, bankrupting Iran. And so, of course, the Iranians are a little nervous. I'm worried now that they're looking at this window of opportunity before the American election right. and thinking, gee, this is when we better make our move, because we have Joe Biden. We know he's weak. We can push him around. We get Donald Trump. Nobody's pushing him around. Yeah. That's something else. KT and Amir, thank you both so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, time now for news from the left. First up, a clip.